Hi everyone and good morning from a beautiful day here in the Bahamas. A beautiful day on board the Carnival Vista cruise ship. We're on this cruise, really enjoy Carnival Cruise Line. In this video, we're gonna show off everything the Carnival Vista has to offer from the drinks and the bars to all the activities, the food. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. I love cruise days. Yeah, and starting here at a very, very nice pool deck, kind of the heart and soul of any cruise ship. You can see tons and tons of loungers for getting some sun in, along with a pretty good sized pool. Now there's also two pool bars. We're in port, so the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar is not currently open, but the Red Frog Rum Bar is indeed open, which is my preferred out of the two pool bars, and it's very busy. Yes. Um, the pool deck is used quite a bit. There's a sail away party out here. Tonight there's gonna be a big 80s rock and glow party. It's and a really good deck for the parties. They, of course, remove all the loungers, and there's a lot of space for people to dance. Yes, and there's also a big Jumbotron where they play movies in the evening. Last night they played Super Mario Brothers and one of the Spider-Verse films. They've also got a pretty good size water park, two slides and then a splash area. There's one tube slide and one body slide. I love any slides like this one. I think it's like the kaleidoscope slide where they have the colored lights in the middle of it. Those are pretty awesome and lots of stuff for the kids to do up there. All right, that is the pool deck. Let's go explore the rest they of the ship. also have really good looking chairs over here, yes. which is very unique to our Carnival Cruise. Right now I'm in the back of the ship on the Lido deck where they have the aft pool. There's also a very large bar, very crowded bar. And then the thing I really like out here from 10 in the morning until four in the morning is the pizza place. They do five different types of pizza and it's a really good quality pizza. Uh, something new that I have not seen on Carnival Cruise Ship before. They do some upcharge pizza for more specialty stuff. And uh, you know, it's cruise ship day. It's 10 a.m. I didn't, the breakfast day was pretty crowded. So I went out here and got a prosciutto pizza for breakfast. Also in the back of the pool, you'll find the Seafood Shack. Now this is an upcharge quick service seafood restaurant. I'm really not a seafood person, nor do I like spending too much extra money while on a cruise ship, so this one is not for me, but they do have a lot of stuff on offer. Located on decks three, four, and five, right in the middle of the ship, you'll find the atrium on board the Carnival Vista, and it's a really cool atrium. I love right in the middle, there's a giant 360 video screen, and the cool thing about that, it'll change images a couple times an hour, and then different days will also have different images on it. The atrium is home to big atrium dance parties in the evening, and lots of live music. There was electric violinists and these two guys played country music and they were outstanding. Located on decks four and five all the way in the front of the ship is what's called the Liquid Lounge which is the main show theater on board the Carnival Vista and it's definitely not the biggest show venue you'll find on any cruise ship so if there's something you really want to see I do advise getting there a little bit early. During our cruise it's used for the main production shows but it's also used for things like bingo, there was a music trivia in there at one point as well as some game shows. Now the big production shows in the evening we were on a very very quick voyage on the Vista. It was only two nights long but we did get a couple of shows on night one was a welcome aboard show and night two was a fantastic show it's called flick which is kind of a big tribute to the music of the movies and it is awesome it's got a little bit of like Cirque du Soleil style weirdness in there but it's a great great show cool special effects with the big screen in the background it's actually my favorite show I've ever seen on a carnival cruise ship so be sure not to miss that one Towards the back of the ship on deck four, you will find the Limelight Lounge, which is a dual purpose venue. Earlier in the night, it's going to be the comedy club on board the Carnival's Vista. There'll be two different comedians, and then some shows will be PG, some shows will be adults only. We saw one of the comedians, and he was very, very likable. Later on at night, this becomes the cruise ship's nightclub. Something I like about the nightclub in here is that there'll be like theme nights. So one night I was in there and it was like 90s music hour before it becomes the more the more nightclub atmosphere you would expect from a nightclub with full of people, you know, having beverages and looking to meet other people. But still a fun time. On the promenade deck, you'll find the Red Fog Pub and Brewery. And this is a pretty cool location. I'm drinking their American Pale Ale. Molly's got the Caribbean wheat. There'll be a music here in the evening, so there'll be a steel drums person as well as a solo guitarist. Mm -hmm. And it is an actual functioning brewery. You can see them actually brewing the beer in there. There's a lady working on it. And that, that is really, really neat. The Red Frog Pub is probably the biggest bar on board. And I love this back section here where they have the games. Two different shuffleboard tables, 
two different foosball tables. And then all the way in the corner, they even have a dartboard. Well, it's a little weird, it's like a plastic dartboard, but they have real darts, so it, it just doesn't work. I'm gonna throw a lefty and try to show you how this does not work. Nope, every time. On deck five, all the way in the back of the ship, you'll find the Havana section, home to the Havana bar, which I think is one of the coolest spaces on the ship as far as like, you know, interesting decor, really cool tiling, it's awesome so chairs. It's very, very pretty. Now that over here, we're at the Havana bar, which does have a specialty drink menu. In the evenings, this will be where the Latin band will play. Just got a couple of beverages here at the Havana bar. Uh, they're pretty nice. They have a very nice specialty menu in here. Molly got the Hotel National. I got the Havana Especial. And then also in this area of the ship is if you have a Havana stateroom, they have their own special area in the back of the ship with a couple of hot tubs, as well as a pool bar, and a really nice infinity pool. Now, I am not staying in one of these. I'm in an interior cabin, so, uh, well, that's all I can show you. Located on deck 15 in the front of the ship, you'll find the Serenity Deck, which is the adults only area on board the Carnival Vista. And I always like when cruise ships have something like this as the amount of kids on a ship would very much vary sailing to sailing, and the behavior of kids will also vary sailor to sailing. But this is where you'll find the nice loungers. Yeah, those look and super comfortable. And the day beds or cuddle pods. It's a very large serenity area. We love the hot tubs up here in the serenity area. Uh, almost hanging over the side of the ship a little bit. Now we are filming this pretty much as soon as we came on board the Vista as uh, it's just easier to shoot this with almost nobody here instead of, you know, an old guy wearing a thong, which I have seen on some of these Serenity decks. I love about the Serenity deck on this ship. First of all, they have a dispenser with water in it. That's really nice. But they also have a giant, giant bar. Uh, I've been on some of the Carnival cruise ships and the Serenity deck bar is very small. Not the case on this one. This one is massive. On the pool deck, you'll find the Blue Iguana Cantina, a quick service included with the cost of your cruise. Uh, tacos and burritos. We got one with chicken and one with pork. And then the burrito area over here, it's kind of like a Moe's or a Chipotle where you can build your own burrito. Also in the morning, they have breakfast here. They do breakfast burritos and they are outstanding. The best burger at sea has to be Guy's Burger Joint. On deck five, the promenade deck, is the Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue. I believe this is open on embarkation day and then open again on sea days. Let's go grab some food. All sorts of good stuff. You got potato salad, slaw, blue ribbon chicken. That looks fantastic. Beef, my personal favorite, the championship pork butt. What do you got? And dooley sausage, collard greens, uh, good looking mac and cheese and baked beans. The area I really like here on the Carnival Vista is what's known as the Lanai, which is this outdoor deck on deck five. Lots of fun seats out here. There's some outdoor bars, uh, some of the specialty dining restaurants that we, places you can eat outside, like if you want to eat outside at the steakhouse, you can eat outside there. But it's, it's very nice and it's good to get out and get some fresh air. On the promenade deck, you'll find the Ocean Plaza, which is a very big lounge area. There is a bar in here as well on the far side. And this is really where you'll find a lot of activities on the ship. During the afternoon, this is the trivia location. Mm -hmm. um, in the early evening, this is the karaoke bar. Yep. And at night, it is a variety band that plays in here. We actually just played movie quotes trivia and lost by one because Molly got a Harry Potter quote wrong. I was going between two different movies and I picked the wrong one. Shame. Shame. All right, so I gotta say Molly did redeem herself. She got 19 out of 20 and won Harry Potter trivia. Yay!
Right now we're in my favorite bar on the ship. On deck five, you'll find the Alchemy Bar, which is the craft cocktail bar, bar on board, and also like the most talented bartenders. Molly got a drink on their menu, the French Kiss, which has a sparkling wine in it. I think there's raspberries in it. It's very, very good. I got very excited. We came to this bar as soon as they opened, and uh, they had a bottle of Blanton's whiskey, my personal favorite whiskey. So I got an old fashioned made with that. But really, that you come here and order kind of like any martini you might think of, and they'll be able to make it up. And the menu's really good. I love the Alchemy Bar. On deck 12 in the back of the ship, you'll find the sports court area, a full length basketball court which I'm sure is very popular. Plenty of balls as well. And one thing I like, the very, very high ceilings on this one. I like a Jack saying, I'm 7'1", and you? Not 7'1", <laughs> six foot zero. <laughs> What's neat is right by the basketball course, there's two different pool tables. Unfortunately, one of the pool tables, as Molly's gonna demonstrate, feels like it's in one of your, your roadside wacky shack kind of things. Oh, as, that's not as bad. No, only two balls rolled completely to the side, making the pool. Not really a game you could play. Let's let's get a break here. And uh Yep, that's <laughs> it's not really how this you game blow. should work. You're, you're solid. <laughs> yep, that's that's not how pool should work. The other one, there's one that I think is level because I see more people playing that one, but the the one over here, definitely not the case. In the back of the ship, on deck 12, you have the sports court, you have these seats. And then a very nice mini golf course, very new, looks amazing, pretty fun. You also have a rope course. And then something unique to this class of ships, you have something called the Sky Ride. And the Sky Ride is a mix between a bicycle and a zip line type thing. And here they come. It goes all around the back of the ship here. There's two They're different vehicles. Miami. There is... Wow. They switch sides. Oh. So no matter which side you're They're on, you do have a view of the ocean. And I wouldn't believe that the view from up there is pretty amazing on a sea day. However, I will be honest, it's been closed most of our time here aboard. It's only been open for a few hours, so therefore the line is very, very long. But it is a free attraction, and it's something very unique to this class of ship. The rope course itself, I believe, is kind of new. I mean, it's been on the ship, but I think they redid some of the courses. Oh. <laughs> Overall, a very fun time here on the sports court. By the mini golf course, there's what's called the clubhouse where there'll be foosball, ping pong, and then most interesting is this, Sky Billiards. It is way more challenging than what it looks like. Yes, it combines soccer and pool. Yeah, it was a really good shot. It was. And it's pretty fun, especially if you, like, you grab a beer, you come in here and, and play with some of your buddies. It's a very, very different thing to see on a cruise ship. On deck five in the middle of the ship is the piano bar on board the Carnival Vista. And this was a really, really good time. It was popular during the entire cruise. The piano guy on our ceiling was named Roger, and he was fantastic. He'd sing some songs by himself. He'd bring some people up to sing. And it was really, really good time. Sing songs I've never heard in a piano bar, like Cult 45 by Afro Man. So it was quite the experience. Also, they have their own specialty drink menu in here. I'm a big fan of the Showstopper Martini. On deck 11 in the back of the ship, you'll find Gigi. Asian kitchen. Now for dinner, this is an upcharge restaurant. It costs $24. But if you come up here during lunchtime, it isn't included with the cost of your cruise restaurant. And it is a kind of a noodle bowl and wok station. You get to pick what kind of items you want. And you can also order some of their specialty drinks. And our lunch has been served. It smells fantastic. Molly got the chicken noodle bowl. And I got the steak noodle bowl. Very pleased with our meal here at the Asian Kitchen. Uh, Molly's is not as spicy, I think it's tastier. My steak bowl is, uh, it's, it's pretty pretty spicy. It's hot. We got a couple of these specialty cocktails as well. Molly got the sake sangria, which tastes kind of like a normal sangria. I really like mine. I got the signature green tea martini. And green tea really isn't like a flavor I would normally go for, but this is absolutely delicious. Really you can drink good. this like it's nothing. 
On deck 11, you'll find Cucina del Capitano. This is in the back of the ship. And this for dinner is the upcharge Italian restaurant. For lunch, it is the pasta bar. It is really good for dinner. We've had it multiple times, and it's one of my favorite upcharge restaurants. It is, uh, it's it's gone up in price. It's uh, $24 a person. Come for lunch, it's included. And you get to just sort of make your own pasta based on whatever you want from that list. I also enjoy some of the decorations in here. It's very much Italian themed. So you'll have a bunch of pictures of Venice on the wall and a big carnival cruise ship and other kind of fun stuff as well. We did order some bread for lunch. Now, if you do come here during dinner time and you spend that $24, that bread is some of the best bread you'll find on any cruise ship anywhere. It's so good. It's Lots like of cheese. And, garlic and yeah. cheese. And our pasta has arrived. It showed up really quick. We're actually the only ones in the restaurant right now. We got penne with Alfredo sauce, sausage, and chicken. And yeah, it's actually a, a very peaceful place to come to lunch, especially on like an embarkation day, where sometimes you can go to the buffet and it'll be pure chaos. Come up here to Cucina del Capitano or the Asian restaurant, and you can eat in peace. And the food is really, really good. You are a below the basketball, so yeah, you do hear it. Yeah, it's not the yeah. You eat in peace, as in there's not a million people around, but yeah. you do hear, you know, somebody shooting three pointers up in front of you. On deck seven, midship, they have the IMAX theater. Which has IMAX dimensions, but not IMAX proportions. So if you're used to like the IMAX dome at a science museum or a giant, giant IMAX, like at the Regal in, in, or, um, in Orlando, not quite that. They, they do have snacks and everything. And yeah, each movie looks like it's about $17. They do show movies that's actually in theaters. Yeah, like Argo came out like a week or two ago. Yeah. Now we're not very, very short selling. I believe sometimes it, on sea days they have like the uh, the more the nature documentaries and those will be much much cheaper yes in the back of the ship is a horizon restaurant this is the anytime my dining restaurant it is pretty big i have to say one thing that i do love is that they do have a bar here so if you do order drinks your drinks probably do come a little bit faster and now we're going to show you everything that we have on night two, this is formal night. We have found our seats here in the main dining room. Now, the menu is a QR code. I believe mm. if you ask for a physical menu, they will give you a physical menu. However, one thing I do like about the QR code is it's a very allergy friendly. This is the main menu. And if you swipe, there's a vegan menu right now. And it does have different items than the regular menu. And there's also a gluten-free menu. Dinner starts off with some bread and some butter. The appetizer for dinner, I went with the vegan fettuccine pasta. Again, this was only on the vegan menu, so make sure you look at all the menus. And then you went with what are your favorite things? Very non-vegan. <laughs> yes, beef, beef capaccio. For the main course, I went with chicken cordon bleu, one of my favorite meals. And we have a prime rib. Medium rare, with au jus, and bacon bits in the baked potato. Finishing dinner with dessert, I got the creme brulee. And he got the classic carnival melting cake. It's really, really delicious. On the promenade deck, you'll find a coffee shop on board where for a fee you can get all sorts of coffees and also milkshakes. Now, if you're on the Cheers beverage package, then these will be included. This is going to be fantastic. I got a chocolate milkshake with a shot of Chambord in it. Mm -hmm. um, they'll also have energy drinks for sale over here, Gatorades, and I, I'm just excited for this milkshake. They also have daily puzzles and if you need a paper version of the puzzle. Oh, and deck four, right by the casino, is where you'll find the Heroes Tribute Bar, which is a sports bar on board the ship. A pretty nice sports bar, not overly large, so if there's a big game on, I would definitely recommend getting here early. Is that Samuel? And I also like they have the big scroll that goes around the outside. And uh, right now there's three different games on, so it's kind of fun to hang out and relax. Normally not one of the busier bars on the ship, at least on our sailing. On deck four, you'll find the casino on board the Carnival Vista. And man, this is a big casino. It's giant. It's one of the biggest casinos I think I've seen on a cruise ship. 
just absolutely massive. All sorts of games, lots and lots of slot machines. They also got more, more weirder games, something like this, where you have to try and cut that rope to win a whole plastic ball full of money. And the main casino here, it is a smoking casino. It was very, very busy last night, as well as very, very smoky last night. You can see all of the table games over there. And then something I do like about the casino area is we come over here to the middle, they've got a small version of the main atrium. There's like a mini atrium, complete with another one of these big video screens. It is weird because they don't have a bar here in the casino. Yeah, it is odd. Something I like is that they have a new non-smoking casino on deck four, kind of near the other one, but it's off on its own alcove. This was added during the dry dock refurbishment. And I'm somebody that likes to gamble on occasion, play roulette, a video poker is probably my game of choice. And it's nice that they do have a non-smoking option. And the chairs. Yeah, they have like the best casino chairs on this cruise ship. Look how comfy those are. You can see the roulette. We've got Fun 21, Blackjack. And over here is Heads Up, Texas Hold'em, Lucky Ladies, and lots of slot machines. On the Lido deck, of course, you'll find the buffet on board. We're on a port day for lunch. Let's go see what's for lunch. All right, there's a Latin America section. Arroz chifula. I have no idea. I'm not even going to try to pronounce whatever that is. You've got some chicken. Ooh, pork shoulder. That looks really good. A vegetarian chimichanga. And, um, yep. Another one I'm not going to try and pronounce. And there is a carving station as well. You'll find a build your own salad section of the buffet. So the buffet with some cold cuts and then focaccia bread. Interesting. Today for dessert, they've got gelato and a whole bunch of fun toppings. I think Molly's putting some uh, raspberry sauce on our gelato there. Gelato is freshly made too in these machines here. This for lunch today, there is an empanada station with empanadas and different types of dips. In the area, you'll find some soft serve ice cream machines, including a frozen yogurt one that combines chocolate and strawberry. That's fantastic. The buffet area does have a bunch of beverage stations, these will be included with the cost of your cruise lemonade, iced tea, their juices in the mornings, and then these fancy coffee machines. I really like the carnival does in the buffet area. They'll have an allergy assistant, so if you have any allergy questions, there's always somebody here to answer them. I really like how this buffet looks aesthetically with the, the fake trees. It's uh, very pleasant in here. Different sections of the buffet, and make sure you go to different sections because there'll be different items in different areas. Out the carving station today, maple baked ham. That's fantastic. This section of the buffet is the comfort kitchen. So you got a noodle casserole, shrimp and grits, all right. Really good looking Alabama white barbecue, chicken, some pot roast, hard to beat mashed potatoes, vegetable, enchiladas, my favorite. These are amazing. Those are really good. The jalapeno hush puppies. And some vegetables. And there are more desserts. You got the turtle chocolate layer cake. Oh man. Chocolate bourbon pecan cake. A chocolate coffee cake. It's a peanut butter chocolate layer cake. Windmill chocolate cake. Oh, and chocolate cheesecake. In the buffet area is the deli. Now this has probably the second longest hours of any food locations. Of course, the pizza has the longest, but this is open from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We really love well, I love the grilled ham and cheese. And then we have the buffalo chicken is really, really Steak good. cheese number six, good stuff. Yeah, that one's good too. Lots of good options. Unfortunately, we couldn't show you all the food because, well, we had a lot to eat in two days.
On decks 12 and 14 in the front of the ship is where you'll find the spa area on board the Carnival Vista. There is no deck 13 on the Vista. I guess it's an unlucky number, and it makes their ship sound bigger. But the spa area, me and Molly, we're not really spa people. We did take the tour to check things out. They do have all your stuff in there, like massages and treatment rooms. There's also a thermal suite you can buy a pass for with a really nice big giant hot tub and stone loungers and a salon to get your hair all done up. This is also where you'll find the gym on board the Carnival Vista. Normally, if I'm on a long cruise I try and get to the gym not the case on this two-night adventure on the Vista but it was a pretty good sized gym for a cruise ship there is an area dedicated to classes in the gym section for things like yoga or spin bike classes in the middle of the promenade deck 5 you will find the Fahrenheit 555 steakhouse which is the upcharge steakhouse on board the Vista we didn't dine there this time it was a pretty quick cruise and it's a rather expensive place to go I believe the meal is around $50 or so per person so quite pricey I've had a good time in carnival steakhouses but man it's just it's a lot of money to, to pay for a meal and one thing I do like about this area there is a bar inside the steakhouse where you can go in even if you're not eating there and get some really nice cocktails on deck 11 you'll find Camp Ocean Ocean, which, first of all, this, this is a really cool entrance. It is. And this is the kids' club area on board. There's three different clubs between the ages of 2 to 11. And they've got some uh, games, I guess, anybody could come and look at this. Ooh, um, MCU book. And then over here is something that's really neat. Something I really like on this classic ship is Dr. Zeus's book fill. Just kind of an area where you could come in <laughs> and read. Pretty much, I think almost every Dr. Zeus book there is. There is a lot. Lots and lots of copies. Also it's a probably, fun little area for yeah. kids and families. And probably a good area for them to like run around. And mm -hmm. It's very colorful. Yeah, all the Dr. Zeus characters. Look at this one chair. I know, that's, 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 that is. that's a fun chair. And then there's apparently uh, coloring. Oh, you could color in you the could cat color and hat. Cat and hat. Hopefully I don't hit my 15 drinks and then go decide to, I really want to color in that cat in the hat. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a very nice section. This is nice. As part of Camp Ocean, they have a playground. On deck six, you'll find more kids clubs, including Circle C, which is for ages 12 to 14. It's actually a pretty good sized space. Lots of TVs, I'm assuming, for video games. And yeah, it's a, lots and lots of video game stations. Also on deck six, you'll find Club O2, which is the teen club on board. It's actually a new space on the ship. Uh, this ship just came out of dry dock. They actually, this used to be the arcade. They moved a whole bunch of stuff around. So as you can tell, this looks very, very shiny and new. And that's because, well, it is shiny and new. <laughs> Cornwall. Yeah. Pretty, another pretty good size club. The promenade deck five is where you'll find the Pixels Gallery. So if you took any photos while on board the ship, you could see them over here. I believe you can also see them in the app. I love the big screens they have. And it's a very interesting area. I don't really take a lot of photos on the ship, but if you are a returning cruiser on Carnival, this is where you go to get your VIFP gifts. So you get your logo gift or your pin. If you're a certain level of returning cruiser, you would pick that up over here at the desk. Something I like here on the Vista, um, once you take the stairs to the next floor, it's painted on the carpeting which floor you're on. That is very helpful. Each stairwell, there is this picture with lights around it. Of course, the pictures vary per stairway, but it's really nice. Very pretty. On the Vista, they do have a self-laundry room that's 24 hours, so you can do laundry, which is really, really nice. A lot of cruise lines I don't feel like offer this. Now it does cost money. It looks like it's two dollars per detergent and then three fifty to do a cycle. But they do have an ironing board in here as well, I believe. Yes they do. Deck five you'll find Bonsai Sushi, which is an upcharge sushi restaurant, a pretty good size. And I'm gonna show the menu over here. It was uh, pretty popular yeah. last night. Um, not one of the more expensive upcharge restaurants. It's not like the, where you, the steakhouse where you go and spend $50. On deck six, you'll find the Warehouse Arcade, the arcade on board. It's a new location for this arcade. Yes, if you've been on the Carnival Vista before, this is where the Thrill Theater used to be. Uh, they did some shuffling and got rid of the Thrill Theater. Unfortunately, I was actually a fan. I thought that was pretty cool. 
and then you've got a new arcade over here. A very, very modern arcade, as you expect with it being moving locations. And some of the games are not overly expensive. Like this one here, you can play this gun game for $1.50. I don't think that's too bad at all. No, not at all. Now, in the middle of the arcade is two virtual reality rides. You've got the Kong one, and you've got the VR Rabbits one. And here is the VR Rabbits one. Now, both the VR rides, those will be about $5 if you want to go on them. I do like this game. This is one of my favorite, like, silly arcade games where you spin the wheel, and depending on where it lands, it's how many lollipops you win. Yeah. Uh, you got Jurassic Park Arcade, a wonderful game. Uh, this wall is pretty much all claw machines, and you can win Squishmallows or really big prizes. Like, I mean, look at that bundle, a PS5, a GoPro, and some Beats headphones. And then it's back to more plushies. You got the Fast and Furious arcade game. Not one of the larger versions of this, but that's a very cool game. You got this game here, which shows uh, pretty much how hard you could punch. You can actually win some prizes if you hit a lucky number. This one's pretty cool. It's a virtual reality motorcycle game. I love this, it's air hockey but with air hockey with a whole bunch of pucks. This one on the other hand, very expensive. One play on this game, $4. Finishing up the arcade, you do have some more high value prizes. You could win a giant, probably four foot tall elephant in this one. Yeah, that's a giant elephant. Or a PS5. In the main atrium area on deck four and five, is where you'll find all the shopping on board the Carnival Vista. Let's take a look at some of these shops. There is a big Invicto watch store. If you want to buy a fancy, fancy watch. I mean, look at some of these things. These are fancy watches. One of my favorite stores, the Duty Free Liquor Store. I didn't see the prices as super great on this ship, but they do do a free liquor tasting on day one, and that was a good time. This might be the most fun shop out of all of them. This is Cherry on Top, the candy shop. And like, look at all the stuff you could buy, like a giant gummy snake. Also a lot of kids stuff in here. Uh, duck stuff, and with it being the candy shop, lots and lots of candy you could buy by the pound. Very pretty store as well. There's also a Carnival Adventures store. This kind of stuff you might need if you're going on a shore excursion. There's also a store that sells fancy sunglasses. Yep, those, those look fancy. Deck 5, there's a very, very large store list for all sorts of stuff like Pandora jewelry, sports and crystals, more watches. This is very much your, uh, probably your priciest store on the ship. It's very nice. If you go closer to the theater on Deck 5 in the big fancy store, there is a whole section for perfumes. On Deck 5, you'll also find the Epi Jewelry Store, which looks very fancy, and the Funnel Gear Store, which will be all your Carnival and your Carnival Vista merchandise. Let's go uh, see what kind of cool stuff they got. This piece of merchandise for $77. It is a floating wireless waterproof speaker in the ship, so you can put this in the pool or the hot tub and play music. Also, you've got tons and tons of snacks in here. Aloe vera, which you know people might need on a cruise ship, and then I do like this, like the plushy Carnival cruise ship, the Carnival cruise ship that is also a puzzle, and then over here you do have the ship model. Now this does sport the old uh, livery that it had before the dry dock. A very fancy eighty-five dollar jacket with sparkles on it. And then they've got some um, Brito art inspired selection of merchandise. There is a decent selection of Carnival Vista t shirts, as well as Carnival General t shirts and hats. This one here, that's it's very much my style of shirt, that one there. Now, Molly and I, there's one thing we try and buy on every single cruise ship, and that is this right here, the Christmas ornament of the cruise ship. We have a, a very small Christmas tree, which is now almost completely full of cruise ships, and uh, we have to buy the one for the Carnival Vista. Molly, how much is it today? Uh, it is $14. $14. Located on deck four, in between the comedy club and the sports bar, you'll find the art gallery on board. 
And they do different events down here from scavenger hunts to the big art auctions. Guess the Guess the, the weight price. and the price and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. it's, it is interesting, I believe they do switch up the artwork so what's on the wall one day might not be on the wall the next day. I think this one has been my favorite I walked past because, well, that's, that's just strange. That's odd. That is odd. Right now I'm at something very interesting on this ship, and that is the Family Harbor Lounge on Deck 2. Um, it is a, if you book one of these cabins, you get access to a special lounge just for families, and they'll have their own breakfast down here. They'll also do like afternoon and evening snacks. Uh, I'm seeing an in interior, the door is just open, so I wandered in. You got all sorts of specialty milks, orange juice, and then something I really like, if you book one of these, you get your own ice cream machine. This is on deck two. On deck five, the promenade deck, is where you'll find the library on board. And it's actually labeled as the library bar, so they do have a bar in here. I can't imagine this bar operates all that often, probably more for special events or if somebody buys it out. They do have some very, very nice chairs though. And with it being the library, they've got a couple games you can play, so if you want to play checkers and things like that. One thing is, it does not seem like there's a lot of books on this ship, Molly. No! And you know, one book that's definitely not here, Experience the Point, the unofficial guidebook to Cedar Point, written and autographed by our own Andrew Hyde. So we're going to take a copy of Hyde's book, and we're going to leave it here in the library on board the Carnival Vista, so uh, you can come find it. Take your picture with it, don't steal it. And you, too, can experience the point. And here is our stateroom cabin. We were in 6303, an interior cabin, but I think it's a pretty good size interior cabin. It is pretty big. Our, our, our cabin just got made up, so we got this kind of a dog bunny thing. It's a dog. A little, a little plain on the cabin, like only that one piece of art. Uh, I thought the bed was very, very comfortable. Good pillows. Nice pillows. Uh, something I did enjoy about the cabin was they, they got like free on-demand movies, about 20 or so free on-demand movies, and then probably about 15 or so channels on the TV. Uh, one thing I don't think is great though is they get ESPN, or the, like the weird foreign ESPN, and a, like ESPN2 and the SEC network in the bars, but those are not on your stateroom TV. There is a fridge down here, which I'm guessing we have it probably still filled with some Gatorades. Yep, that, uh, that helps that beverage package recover at the end of the day. Yep. Um, not a ton of storage on this cruise. Um, I know the Vista does a lot of six to eight day sailings. You do have a hair dryer in here. Yeah, but the storage space is, like we're on a two night sailing, so obviously it's gonna be fine. But if you were on like an eight day, I feel like it might be a little tight. Yeah. Especially if you're gonna bring a lot of clothes. Uh, there's a safe obviously in here. In the bathroom. And everyone's favorite part the cruise ship bathroom. Uh, again, very functional bathroom. Um, plenty of space for all of the stuff you might need in the bathroom area. Um, I hate the shower curtain, but the shower itself I thought was a pretty pretty good size for a cruise ship. Um, you do have shampoo and shower gel. I kind of felt like Cousin Eddie when I'm in the shower. is like, ah, give me some of the blue, now some of the yellow. And then uh, the toilet is, might be the most terrifying one I've seen on a cruise ship. Look at this. That is violent. Very violent. All right, and that'll do it for our cruise on board the Carnival Vista. It was a fun time indeed. Now a little bit of information about this cruise. The cabin cost per person for the cruise was about $250 each, and that does include your taxes and fees, your beverage plan, and that was originally for our three-day sailing. Unfortunately on our sailing, our three-day sailing became a two-day sailing since this cruise ship was delayed out of its big dry dock refurbishment, but that money did get refunded to us on our credit card. <laughs> Now, like any sort of vacation, there's going to be some parts that we like and some parts that we don't like as much, but I, I think well, we had a good time. Let's start with the positives. And I, I think the one overwhelming thing for me, the food quality on board, I thought was very strong. Yeah, no, I agreed. There was cheese empanadas. 
Those were amazing. The, the biggest smile on your face the entire cruise was when you bit into this cheese empanada that was part of that, that Latin buffet for lunch. But I, I thought overall it was a higher quality of food I've seen on other Carnival ships. I thought the main dining room was very solid. Uh, that Mongolian wok was very good. The barbecue was very good. The tacos are excellent. I thought overall food quality was very strong. And that's one of my favorite things about Carnival is how many food locations and different food locations on uh, lunch, at lunch. Yes, uh, something I enjoy on any cruise line, they do offer a beverage package. On Carnival Cruise Line, it's called Cheers. It's around 65 or $70, and that includes any unlimited amount of non-alcoholic beverages you want and 15 alcoholic beverages per day. So that's always a good time. I love the Alchemy Bar. Love that a lot of bars will have some different menus or unique beers, and that makes it a really fun time. Uh, some of my favorites, personally, on this ship was... We, uh, we went to the Steakhouse Bar. You can just go to the bar without going to the Steakhouse. And there's a couple of seats there. And Alex, the bartender, made some fantastic old fashions. They were very, very old. strong, but great old fashions. Yeah, uh, that was really good. And on the other end of the spectrum, that uh, the chocolate milkshake from the with Chambord in it from the Shake Spot and the Coffee Bar, that was, oh, that was so really, good. really, really good. Um, One of my favorite things on the cruise is the music. And there was a big variety of music. You had a violinist trio. You had, of course, the piano bar with Roger. I think it was his name. Yeah, I think um, that's right. They had a very unique, like, country duo. They were my favorite musical act on the ship. They were fantastic. They were really, really good. But there were so many different... Um, there was other variety bands, there was guitarists, but there was always music going on at night. Yeah, it was fun to wander from bar to bar and like, oh, this is my favorite song, let me go to the next one. Um, I also really liked the stage show. We were only on a two-night cruise, so there wasn't a whole lot going on in the main theater, but the one show we did get to see was Flick, which kind of Carnival Cruise Line's tribute to the movies, and it's a really cool show. It uh, kind of has some, some Cirque du Soleil kind of elements with that kind of like Cirque weirdness to it, but it's a very fun show. I loved all the activities, too. There was a lot of games. There was the shuffleboard. There was the um, weird billiard and sky football. Yep. No, it was soccer. Yeah, soccer, soccer billiards. You had a mini golf. Mm -hmm. You had, uh, you know, pool tables that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> um, a foosball tables, shuffleboard. So there was a lot of different games around the ship. And I was like, you know, grabbing a beer and playing some simple games like that. That's a good time. Um, a couple of staff shout outs. I mentioned Alex at the Steakhouse Bar. Also, Mustafa and Gabby. Gabby in the pub. Excellent, excellent employees. Very, Top notch very stuff. friendly. Now with the good also comes the bad. And this was this was far from a perfect sailing. Um, the ship is crowded. And there's sometimes you'll be at a bar and there'll be, you know, 20 people waiting for a couple bartenders to make drinks. Yes, you do have to pack your patients. I did find like we did tip um, $1 per drink yeah. for the most time. Sometimes we did more. Um, and that, and, that helps. And I do think that helps a little bit. Not necessarily get your drinks faster, but I did, like, you had a pour. <laughs> I, I had some generous a pours. very, very strong pour at one point. Yes. Um, but I agree. It would take some time. You had a you know, and even that, there patient, was, and, and there was a lot of, lot of, lot of weights. Yeah, and even even compared to other Carnival cruise ships, like this was a much larger line for tacos or burgers than I've seen on other Carnival cruise lines. Normally, late night food is always a disaster on the Carnival cruise ships. This might have been worse than any of them. Yes. It, yeah, so a very um, long line. One of my biggest pet peeves is this uh, ship just came out of dry dock, and a was, lengthy dry dock too, about a month and a half. This was out of rotation. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely not ready for that. No. The sky ride was down for most of our cruise. It was supposed to be open from 11 a.m. Or, yeah, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It didn't open until 6, I think. At least it did open at it one point. It did open, and that was nice. But then also, like, you had 4,000 people all trying to get on in that brief time it was mm -hmm. open. So, they well, were. I would have loved something like that. I could have... I could've, give up that much time to go on it. Yeah, and then they were still putting up uh, uh, ropes in the mini course, uh, golf course, and they were doing painting, and it, it would just uh, was not ready. It was not ready. No, uh, arcade games were being put together and mm -hmm. other stuff. And uh, one thing on this ship, it, it seemed very understaffed. And things you don't normally see on cruise ships, like 
tables in the buffet area or by the pool would sit dirty and sit dirty for a very, very long amount of time. Normally it's kind of like instantaneous. Somebody gets up within two, three minutes. Nope, those, their plates are gone, it's wiped down. This, I think some of them would sat for 45 minutes to an hour. There was definitely times that uh, we sat down at a table with plates and I moved it to another table that had plates. And by the time we left, Nothing got touched. <laughs> Nothing got touched. Um, other times, like bars that should have probably four four bartenders, like some of the pool bars, especially the one at the app pool, had about one bartender and 20 people waiting. Yeah. And it's just like, it's time to give up. It's like the drink's not worth it. Yeah. Um, I will recommend some of the quieter bars on the ship. I found the Havana bar to be one of the quieter ones. Not the one you have to pay extra for, but just it's all the way at the end of a corridor. That one I thought was quieter and also the sports bar. So if you want to get your drinks quicker with less lines, that would be the ones I would recommend you go to. We also had a pretty good success in the pub, but we went later in the day. Yeah. Evening. Um, also just some weird kind of quirky stuff. There's no bar in the nightclub or the casino. That's, yeah, that's, that's weird. That's really odd. That was really, really odd. All right, so there you go. That's the good and the bad of the Carnival Vista. Overall, I had a blast. You know, trying to cover that big of a ship in two days was, it was a little bit stressful at times, but then also, man, I had a really, really good time. Some complaints, no complaints that I really don't think could be fixed easily, except for maybe, you know, uh, having a, a bar in your, in your nightclub. <laughs> yeah, you can't build that. <laughs> yeah. But I, overall, I had a good time. Um, if you have any questions about the Carnival Vista, let me know in the comments section below. I read all the comments. I get back to all of them. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you guys didn't watch the cruise videos, me and Molly couldn't go on as many of these cruise ships. And it's really one of our favorite types of vacations. So thank you very much. It is.